Hello, welcome to the Tuesday, September 17th, 2019 edition of the Sands and the Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Stockheim, Germany. One of the ways how attackers are often evading antivirus and malware engines is just to encrypt their malicious attachments. And of course, encrypted zip files have been around for a long time and many other file formats also do support some form of encryption that is often used for this purpose. Latest example is good old by now sextortion emails. These emails of course have been flooding us for well over a year now and the attackers are slowly I think running out of targets and also mail filters are getting better in identifying these emails. So the latest example that Didi came across actually used an encrypted PDF. This of course makes it more difficult to filter these malicious attachments unless you're able to just outright filter encrypted PDFs, which may or may not work in your environment. And adaptive mobile security broke a story that I probably should have covered yesterday, I just uh, sort of missed it. And they're calling it SimJacker. Now, this particular attack is interesting in so far in that it really uses more a feature of SIM cards than actually exploiting any features. SIM cards as they're used in devices ever since GSM networks introduced them are actually quite sophisticated little computers. So it's yet another processor, yet another code environment that an attacker can leverage to execute code and access features in the phone. In particular, as far as SimJacker is concerned, SMS messages can be sent to a phone and they can contain instructions that are then executed within the SIM card. All this happens via a SIM Alliance Toolkit browser or short SAT browser. Now, uh, this browser is not at all related with any web browser. This is a feature, a set of features within the SIM card that historically were used for things like, for example, checking your balance via an SMS message. But since then, the technology has not really been used all that much, according to the blog post by a adaptive mobile security and has been abused by attackers to, for example, retrieve geolocation data from a phone, retrieving serial numbers from a phone, and it can even be used to, for example, dial calls from the phone or sending SMS messages from the phone, which then of course could be used, for example, for misinformation. In some cases, it could even be leveraged to turn the phone on for eavesdropping by having it dial an outbound call. At this point, this particular problem has only been used in targeted attacks. According to Adaptive Mobile Security, they have been working with mobile carriers to block some of these messages. As an end user, there isn't really or appears not to be much that you can do here. You really rely on particularly the mobile carriers, I believe initially, to fix this issue by blocking these messages in their network, but also, of course, the standards that define the feature set of SIM cards have to be adapted in order to fix uh, these problems. And Tavis Ormandy from Google is going after password managers again and found the interesting vulnerability in the popular LastPass password manager. Now, one interesting feature, of course, and one thing I like and usually advertise about these password managers is that they automatically fill in your username and password. In, in doing so, also make sure that they're filling your username and password into the correct site, which, of course, isn't always that easy for a human and they're often tricked by phishing to enter their credentials into the wrong site. But there are certain conditions where password managers get confused as to which site they're on and Tavis found just one such condition with 
LastPass. The issue here is that if you go to a trusted website, you have the password manager enter your credentials, then you are opening another website within the same tab. This website, by using a creative iframe technique, is able to trick the browser into providing the username and password used for the last site that the user visited within the same tab. So attackers can't necessarily get an arbitrary site's password, but they are limited to the password of the site that you visited before you visited the attacker's website. Regardless, LastPass fixed the issue, so please apply their patch. And some good news for you if you're running Exchange Server 2010. Microsoft uh, was planning to stop support for Exchange Server 2010 in January. Well, uh, they are now extending this deadline all the way to October 13th. So you got a few more months there uh, to upgrade and well, uh, like most people probably just move your email to the cloud. Well, that's it for today. So thanks again for listening. And just as a reminder, as usual, if I forgot a story that you think I should have covered, uh, please drop me an email, use the ISC contact page. Always interesting and sort of seeing what I may have missed. So thanks and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.